In every battle, there comes a time when both sides consider themselves beaten, then he who continues the attack wins. The friend in my adversity I shall always cherish most. I can better trust those who help to relieve the gloom of my dark hours than those who are so ready to enjoy with me the sunshine of my prosperity. Labor disgraces no man. Unfortunately, you occasionally find men who disgrace labor. If you see the president, tell him from me that whatever happens, there will be no turning back. There are many men who would have done better than I did under the circumstances in which I found myself. If I had never held command, if I had fallen, there were 10,000 behind who would have followed the contest to the end and never surrendered the Union. If we are to have another contest in the near future of our national existence, I predict that the dividing line will not be Mason and Dixon's but between patriotism and intelligence on the one side. And superstition, ambition, and ignorance on the other. Although a soldier by profession, I have never felt any sort of fondness for war, and I have never advocated it, except as a means of peace. The art of war is simple enough. Find out where your enemy is, get at him as soon as you can, strike him as hard as you can, and keep moving on. Dot, but for a soldier, his duty is plain. He is to obey the orders of all those placed over him and whip the enemy wherever he meets him. The great bulk of the legal voters of the South were men who owned no slaves. Their homes were generally in the hills and poor country. Their facilities for educating their children, even up to the point of reading and writing, were very limited. Their interest in the contest was very meager. What there was, if they had been capable of seeing it, was with the North, they too needed emancipation. In 1850, I believe, the church property in the United States, which paid no tax, amounted to $87 million. In 1900, without a check, it is safe to say, this property will reach a sum exceeding $3 billion. I would suggest the taxation of all property equally. The right of revolution is an inherent one. When people are oppressed by their government, it is a natural right they enjoy to relieve themselves of oppression, if they are strong enough, whether by withdrawal from it, or by overthrowing it and substituting a government more acceptable. Let us labor for the security of free thought, free speech, pure morals, unfettered religious sentiments, and equal rights and privileges for all men. Irrespective of nationality, color, or religion. Leave the matter of religious teaching to the family altar, the church, and the private school, supported entirely by private contribution. Keep church and state forever separate. I felt like anything rather than rejoicing at the downfall of a foe who had fought so long and valiantly, and had suffered so much for a cause, though that cause was, I believe, One of the worst for which a people ever fought, and one for which there was the least excuse. Generally, the officers of the army were indifferent whether the annexation of Texas was consummated or not, but not so all of them. For myself, I was bitterly opposed to the measure, and to this day regard the war, which resulted, as one of the most unjust ever waged by a stronger against a weaker nation. It was an instance of a republic following the bad example of European monarchies, in not considering justice in their desire to acquire additional territory. Our great modern republic. May those who seek the blessings of its institutions and the protection of its flag remember the obligations they impose. There never was a time when, in my opinion, some way could not be found to prevent the drawing of the sword. I know no method to secure the repeal of bad or obnoxious laws so effective as their stringent execution. No theory of my own will ever stand in the way of my executing, in good faith, any order I may receive from those in authority over me. There was always news coming back to the quarter about someone who had been killed or sent to prison for killing someone else. Snowball, stabbed to death at a nightclub in Port Allen. 
Claudie, killed by a woman in New Orleans. Smitty, sent to the state penitentiary at Angola for manslaughter. And there were others who did not go anywhere but simply died slower.